let's talk about what you'll need to take this course. This course assumes a basic familiarity with Python. It's important that you not only be able to write programs, but that you be able to debug them. Of course, this is a necessary skill in any language. This simply means that you've written some programs and worked out the issues when you got errors. And as we all know, you can't really learn something until you've made a few mistakes. I've listed out here on this slide a few of the things that you should know already if you've met this requirement. If you're a beginner, or you need to brush up on your Python, or you'd just like to learn from square one, courses on introductory Python are available from this publisher. To do the exercises and try out the examples in this course, you only need Python and an IDE or text editor. We'll talk about the IDE shortly. The examples in this course are written for Python 2, which means Python 2.5, 2.6, or 2.7. The current development version of Python, around 3.3 as of this recording. So you might wonder why we're not teaching using the latest. The answer is, Python 2 is still the dominant version among developers worldwide. And the main reason for that is that Python 3 is not backward compatible. If you can imagine having a large library of Python 2 code, switching to 3 is not a trivial matter. I think the statistic as of the time of this recording is that approximately 80% of Python developers are still writing code in Python 2. You'll definitely want to become familiar with it. You may find that for the examples in this course, the differences between Python 2 and Python 3 are minor. In the documents section, I've added a short summary of the most common differences between the two versions and how you can convert any of the exercises to Python 3 if you're using that version. In addition to any standard distribution of Python, and if you're on a Mac, Linux, or Unix operating system, this is automatically installed. You'll need the YAML module to complete the work in the data serialization section near the end of this course, and we'll also be discussing PyTest, which is a module that must be separately installed. I've also included some information on how to install modules in the supplementary documents. Finally, we'll want to choose an IDE, 